Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. First session after lunch, the graveyard session. <laughs> so we'll try to do something about that. Uh, I started in the wrong way. I wanted to attend there, but they said, you can't attend and chair at the same time. So I'm back here. And um, we first listen to Marek. Your colleague is also here? Yeah. Okay, so they're He's both here. here for question time. Um, and you both present. We, I will take present. off the presentation okay. and my colleague Melby will answer some questions. Good. We are in fully in sketch engine mood, so the floor will be yours. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, my name is Marek Medvec and I am a part of the team of the sketch engine. I hope you're enjoying uh, the conference. Uh, today I want to present you in the following 20 minutes uh, one part of the sketch engine, which will be about uh, sketch engine pipelines. And uh, a little bit, I will go a little bit deeper into the system, so uh, keep with me. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the first, maybe, first part of the sketch engine that, that uh, takes over of your, uh, of your text. If you uh, put some text into the sketch engine, it's all, uh, it's, it will be processed in some way. And the first is a uh, language pipeline that uh, is composed of several uh, levels of processing. So at the beginning, we have uh, some input text like this. Uh, <clears throat> the first uh, is normalization step of, of the input text. And this is because we uh, don't want to process a lot of uh, different uh, um, representations of one character, like like uh, this uh, 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 how it's called uh, yeah single quotes. Thank you. Uh, these single quotes and any. Uh, other characters because it represents the this single character and uh, it doesn't matter in which form it is and actually it is better for us to for searching for uh, creating the the results you can display on the sketch engine <clears throat> then the next step is uh, tokenization uh, we have our own in-house tokenizer, we call it Unitok, and this is actually just splitting into separate tokens and putting some special uh, tokens that represents, uh, like here, the G means glue, so we know that in the original text uh, the single quote belongs uh, to the ELEX. Uh, next step is uh, sentence tagging. So uh, the tokenized text is processed with, we call it text sentences. It's a script that can recognize the boundaries of the sentence and put uh, new special marks above, above the uh, sen sentence start and sent sentence end. Uh, then the lemmatization take over and we are creating the base form for each token inside the input uh, text uh, for searching in, into the sketch engine you can actually search by word or uh, just by lemma or in the next slide by tech so the next <coughs> next uh, tool is a uh, tagger that assign a special label to each word that represents part of speech uh, and other grammatical categories. Uh, we then, in some cases, here like English and many other, uh, want to 
somehow tweak or fix the things that are uh, not correctly recognized by lemmatizer, tagger, or something else. <coughs> And we uh, we call it post processing. So <clears throat> for this, for example, we have uh, URL in the input sentence. Uh, it's uh, tagged like uh, uh, like an N, and we want to put it N P, uh, and also develop some uh, correct lemma because unknown is unusable for for our customers. The uh, second example is very similar. Uh, there are some more complex uh, post-processing uh, steps, like this one, when we, according to the previous text or the following text, want to adjust uh, the tag or the lemma uh, accordingly because it's not correctly recognized by the uh, previous tools. <coughs> In Sketch Engine, we actually have uh, uh, almost 140 pipelines for 140 uh, languages. So we are actually trying to maintain them and uh, keep in a very good shape to uh, perform very well. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, we are we have developed a process how to evaluate each of the pipelines to see how good it performs, how many tokens it can uh, process in how much time and so on. So <clears throat> these results I will present in the next slides have been uh, analyzed on the uh, setup where we have 252 gigabytes of RAM and 32 threads uh, of CPU. <clears throat> so you don't get confused when I told you that uh, Japanese need 250% of CPU uh, to analyze 1 million tokens. So <clears throat> for uh, each pipeline, we want to, uh, to see how fast it is, how many resources we need for each pipeline separately. So here you can see that uh, most of the pipelines can run uh, multi-thread uh, and use several CPU cores uh, during the, the process. Um, <clears throat> next, we are focusing on the RAM usage. Uh, some of the tools like uh, English are very well built because this is the mainstream language for us and also the most used in a sketch engine. So you can see that uh, this tool was uh, quite uh, tuned up to use as less uh, resources at, as it can and uh, perform very well uh, in a time span. So <clears throat> uh, you can see that Japanese pipeline actually can use up to uh, six gigabytes of, of RAM uh, during an analysis on one, hundred, one million tokens. Uh, and English, where is it? English has some like 500 megabytes or something like that. <clears throat> For the execution time, uh, <clears throat> each pipeline is also tested how long uh, it takes uh, to uh, analyze 1 million tokens. <clears throat> you can see that uh, Ukrainian uh, pipeline uh, can give us the results of the whole pipeline in under the fifth under 50 minutes and actually english where is it oh. yeah, yeah it's very fast yeah uh english it's like under the minute or something like that <clears throat> so for the maximum and minimum value you can see that uh, for 
the best pipelines we have uh, right now can process 1 million tokens under 12 seconds uh, and the not as good pipelines, not the state of the art pipelines we are using right now can take like uh, it's uh, one day, less than one day. <clears throat> And this is maximum and minimum values for the CPU usage and, and for the RAM usage. <clears throat> we also uh, created a linear regression uh, on the separate uh, runs. So we uh, process uh, uh, how much? 50,000 tokens and then, then measure Yes, so incrementally added 50,000 tokens each step and measure the time uh, and number of tokens that have been processed. Uh, we can see uh, that uh, our pipelines are, are quite good, so uh, there is no uh, only time rising and no data processing and uh, so the, the, the line is very good for, uh, to see that uh, there is nothing bad inside our pipeline that can actually stop producing the new output and, uh, and use time to process something complicated. So, uh, in that way, the, the pipelines works very well. <coughs> uh, also for, for Ukrainian, uh, English uh, and the mainstream languages, it's quite okay. But you can see that the Ukrainian uh, pipeline have, uh, has time complexity a little bit more, so uh, we have to spend more time on that or just split it to multiple devices to be able to process the same amount of tokens uh, in the same time as, for example, English. Uh, <clears throat> We also measured uh, the initialization time for each pipeline, where we can see uh, how quick the pipeline can start to process the input text. In some pipelines, we figured out that the resources it needed, some uh, additional data that have to be uh, pulled to the RAM or something like that. So we can see that for Portuguese, for example, there are many, many data that have to be loaded from the disk to the RAM before the pipeline even start. Uh, and for English, for example, there is small amount of time that we needed uh, to begin the processing. The conclusion of this uh, examination of our pipelines follow us to these few lines. Uh, we find out that uh, the less performing pipeline in our uh, stack of pipelines is actually Tagalog right now. So we have to uh, improve it in, in, uh, in the future. <coughs> uh, also, we find out that Thai and Hebrew pipeline uh, have to be checked if there is some memory leak or something like that because it uses too much RAM and it's very CPU heavy. Uh, we also find out that uh, uh, languages with different alphabet uh, from Latin uh, are usually not as developed uh, as the Eng English ones, uh, but we also find out the good things that 12% uh, of our pipelines are able to run multi-thread, so uh, it's very fast and we can process a lot of data with that. Um, that that's, this is 
with the linear regression. I showed you before that linear relationship between number of uh, tokens uh, correspond with the time. So that's a very good thing for us. Uh, so the pipelines uh, don't, don't stack in one place and just use CPU and GPU. Uh, and that all the state, uh, the most used languages have the state-of-the-art pipelines uh, that performs very well. <coughs> you can see actually here are these four top pipelines that are used in Sketch Engine right now. So <coughs> for one million tokens, we are able to process uh, under one minute, one million tokens in English, under one minute in French, under two and a half minutes in Spanish under three minutes and Italian under uh, half a minute. For the future work, uh, we have to uh, uh, put more focus uh, on the pipelines uh, that uh, are uh, not so uh, good regarding to time complexity. Uh, maybe use more parallel processing and improve stability of some pipelines because uh, like Tagalog uh, pipeline, it has some problems processing some characters. So it uh, sometimes just break the, the processing when you had to restart it. That's all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, You Thank have. you, Marek, and um, let's see if people understood everything. So who has something naughty to ask Marek or his colleague? Yes, Yelena. Not yet. <laughs> I just uh, I just would like to ask about Estonian language. So mm -hmm. that uh, Miloš also said that Estonian was so problematic; it just took us like a few weeks to uh, to annotate our corpus. But um, uh, what what can I say? Our uh, uh, Estonian Tagar, Tagar developers, mm -hmm. in order that you could use it, but it would be more efficient. Let's say. Sure. Uh... I don't know details about Estonian pipeline, but uh, it's usually about uh, uh, memory complexity. So how much data it have to be pulled to the memory at the beginning, because some pipelines have is spending much time at the beginning before it even starts. So maybe there and uh, Maybe uh, there can be some multi-threading implemented in that, so it can run uh, on several CPUs at the same time. That improves uh, the result quite a bit in the time section. Um, do you think about something else? Before it was only morphology. And then it wasn't a problematic case at all. But then we added syntaxes, and then when we had the syntaxes, syntactic tagger mm -hmm. uh, tags, then it became so time-consuming task. But syntactic analysis is quite a complex thing. Mm -hmm. uh, these uh, pipelines we are using just for tagging uh, is these steps I presented at the beginning. So uh, more things you are adding and syntactic uh, analysis is far uh, is far more complex than mm -hmm. uh, tokenization and parts of pitch tagging. Mm -hmm. okay. So she asked about Estonian, and of course I'm going to ask about Czech. Um, I found it really interesting that Czech was so quick at first until you got to a million tokens, and then it was so slow. Do you have any idea why? Mm, uh, um, it's okay. Uh, I actually know the guy that implemented uh, the sketch engine pipeline for Czech, uh, and it can be uh, about uh, uh, translation from Latin to UTF-8 because it's implemented uh, in 
battle and old scripts so it it should be updated i think that's the one thing why it uh, go after the english the english one is very fast uh and also it uh, it has a lot of data in the memory that are uh, actually applied during the processing so that might be uh, a thing that it doesn't spend lots of time at the beginning but then it has to apply a lot of things to the actual analysis of the on the, of the roads so the english one can be better in the initialization time and that's the difference anyone else in the room otherwise i have one already from the people who are joining us virtually but before i go there i have one of myself mm -hmm. i'm i must admit first i'm not a user of the sketch engine. Milos knows. It's um, and that's on purpose, and I always say it. So it's for the dumb people. Your subtitle says towards on the fly tokenization of user queries. But I think you mean I have a corpus, I put it in the sketch engine, yes. I wait two or three minutes, I get it back annotated. Yes. So your user query is actually processing my corpus uh, sometimes <laughs> not every time i'm trying to i'm really from looking at it from the outside i don't know yeah. i have a zulu corpus i can throw it in yeah. i wait three minutes i get it back annotated no just uh there are several steps where i know about two when the uh, this is applied. So at the beginning, when you have raw data and putting it into Sketch Engine, you just put the raw text in the Sketch Engine and it will annotate it to the vertical form, uh, compile it to develop the indexes to the words, so making a database, let's say, and that's it. And then you can, uh, you can write some query uh, and have some collocation or something like that. Uh, but I think for uh, complex things like uh, I don't know the, which part of the system it is, but there is one uh, complex, more complex thing that have to go through the pipeline separately in the background when you query the system so it doesn't rely on the pre-tokenized and uh, uh, pre-tokenized corpus but the query itself has to be tokenized analyzed and so on then you have to go through the pipeline for the query itself so that's about it that answers my question but basically the two or three minutes wait it's the first time only when you yes. get your whole corpus and then we're talking what milliseconds so it doesn't yes well it matters for you but i think for your user it may not <laughs> now but um, if, if, i do if, have a question yeah. from someone online let's also fit that in anna frankenberg garcia wants to know uh, more about the post processing how do you develop it is it partly based on user feedback uh, I don't know about user feedback because I'm not in charge of the pipelines right now. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think uh, that because when we are developing the corpus for the new, new language, we usually send it to some native speaker and he give us some feedback. So we are actually applying these fixes of the incorrectly analyzed text to the, this processing part of the whole pipeline uh, and it's only a set of rules how to fix the mistakes by the lemmatizer and tagger and so on so you use in some way yeah feedback, feedback. maybe okay. it's just for one or two person it's not like uh, feedback from uh, 100 people but yeah from net native speaker you only need a few specialists indeed. Thanks again. We run out of time.